I hope that you enjoy. A quick thank you to the T5 peeps. Bob the Dragon, Data Magnet, Cat Crab Lobster, Dark Machine, Try Again 95, Astray the Dreamer, Mezik, Budic Joel, German Chemist, Casper Arnholtz, and Chaos to Must. Thank you very much. Innovation, written by Red Shipped Razor. Captain Gerald Manser strode towards the prisoner deck at a determined pace, undeterred by the prospect of who or what he would be interviewing. As the captain of the newly minted Sultan, the first of the cutting edge Templar class, he had certain duties to carry out, and an infallible image to maintain. Yet no man is infallible, and the captain was actually quite nervous about the prospect of what he was about to do. The prisoner in question had earned the right to the reputation after all, and even though there was all necessary precautions had been taken, there was still an air of uncertainty that permeated the ship. This only served to make the crew nervous, and a nervous crew is a crew not performing at their best. Either way, it wasn't anything the captain couldn't handle. There was a reason that he was made captain of such an important ship at a startlingly young age of 30. His reputation was simply exceptional. Nevertheless, it wasn't like his reputation was going to help him now. The only thing that he could rely on right now were his integrity and wit, so he steeled himself as he made his way to the prisoner's deck. He walked on for another ten minutes, deep into the bowels of the ship. He lamented it being so far away. Yet as he approached, he could almost see the hostility radiating from where the prisoner was held. He was suddenly thankful for all the security afforded of the prisoner's deck. After many twists and turns, he arrived at the entrance of the deck. Only he and a few others on board were permitted to know, as they were only ones mentally strong enough to guarantee that they couldn't be psychologically influenced. To ensure that the location was kept secure, the entrance wasn't even visible to anyone without clearance. To casual onlookers, it simply looked like a smooth, featureless section of the wall, much the same as the rest of the walls on the ship. He placed his hand onto it, allowing the three-factor authentication to take place. His fingerprints, DNA, and soul were analyzed, and once all three were confirmed to belong to him, the door opened. Open, Sesame, he called out to no one in particular still chuckling either way. His jokes, as he liked to call them, were the pain of his crew's existence, much to his amusement. With a deep sigh, he entered the deck. An existential dread almost washed over him, which was orders of magnitude more severe than the mental hostility he felt before. The air was shimmery with it, much like how it did in deserts, except there was no illusion of an oasis. There was no mistaking the nature of the creature producing it. Even so, the captain was mostly unfazed, as it wasn't his first time he dealt with such evil. Such was the nature of his job. The captain made his way towards the prisoner's cell, ensuring that every single security parameter was activated and standing by. Should anything bad happen, they would ensure that the prisoner wouldn't escape, or at the very least, weaken it if it did. Its escape would mean bad news for every mortal being in the sector, and the captain didn't want to be responsible for anything like that. He activated his own security parameters, ensuring his psychic shield was beyond 100% charged and making sure his soul was truly secure. Any fuel for this creature would mean its certain escape, especially a soul of the captain's caliber. He stood in front of the prisoner's cell, Slap dash in the middle of a brightly lit corridor surrounded by multiple war droids. Every physical avenue of escape was considered, meaning that the only chance of escape the prisoner had was via the captain's mind and soul, meaning he couldn't show any weakness. Weakness would mean the death of every mortal in the sector. The captain repeated the security procedures in order to enter the cell and begin the procedure. He entered the cell and took note of his surroundings, making sure to note and rectify any potential changes. Thankfully, the prisoner was inert. The room itself was ten by ten meters stark white. It was brightly lit with no seams visible, giving an impression of it being separate from the rest of the universe. 
Everything in the room was made out of neutronium, even the lights. The prisoner's suite had been sunk into the floor and padlocked with hyperdense neutronium alloy chains, which didn't even allow a nanometer of stray movement. Its arms were also padlocked with the chains and splayed forwards, giving the impression of someone being crucified. They weren't even given enough liberty to breathe or blink, as their entire body had been coated in energy-draining neutronium. All of this meant that the prisoner was barely alive. Nonetheless, if the captain made one mistake, he knew it would be his end. With a single gesture, he undid the seals on the prisoner's eyes and mouth, allowing it the liberty of looking at him. Knowing that he couldn't show a single sign of weakness, he walked up to it and kneeled, making sure to look directly at the eyes. From here on, there would be a battle of wolves, and the person with the strongest would come out victorious. You are going to answer my question, Stephen. If you do, I will allow you the mercy of a quick death. You call that mercy, human? It seems we have different definitions of mercy. Don't play games with me. You know it's merciful in comparison to what your kind does to mortal race on a daily basis. Now answer my question, Screecher. Now oh, what? You're acting awfully cocky for a mortal. Human. The captain sighed and with a swift motion activated one of the hundreds of security parameters surrounding the demon. The energy draining neutronium liquefied and covered the demon's entire body. Within a second, it was activated, and the demon let out its shrieks of agony. Stop! Stop! Please! I'll answer your bloody questions! <sighs> Unfortunately for it, the captain wasn't in a merciful mood. He let it go, and for another couple of minutes, which seemed like an eternity to the Hellion, only when the shrieks weakened did the captain allow any reprise. He allowed the material to remove itself from the demon, revealing that it had become significantly smaller. Its warmly crimson skin had become almost pink. Moreover, its warmly large midnight black horns had been reduced to small, grey and brittle nubs. The captain walked up to it and kneeled again, looking directly into its eyes. Are you sure you don't want to change your mind? I'll answer your questions, mortal, it spat. It's vitriol clear as day, but only if you answer my questions first. Depends on what you ask me, demon. How the fuck did you do that? Did you take back the souls I had consumed? Unfortunately, we're not capable of taking back already consumed souls. Not yet, at least. But what we are capable of is denying you the energy you receive from them. How? How do you do this? Through this cursed material you've coated my body in. Who gave you all such material? They will pay for this, he roared, or at least attempted to. He was a shadow of his former self, after all, and his voice had suffered as a result. Nobody gave this to us, demon. We created it ourselves in order to deal with creatures like you. The mortal race of the CSS have suffered far too long under your tyranny of your kind, so we found ways to deal with you. I know you're alien to the concept, but it's called innovation. Maybe your kind should try it sometime. The captain walked up to the demon and put his hand on its shoulder in a mockery of friendliness. I'll be nice to you, however. I know that Beelzebub favors you, so you're bound to know plenty of information about him. Tell me his whereabouts and I'll return your energy to you. That's a promise, he said sweetly. A vague smile plastered across his face. The demon was silent for a few minutes, yet the captain knew what its answer would be. A universal constant for supernatural creatures was their greed, and the captain knew that the demon wanted nothing more than its energy returned to it, even at the cost of its master. He didn't have to wait long for the answer. He's currently in a meeting with the other higher demons. The coordinates are 223141-5683. You'll find a spatial anomaly there, through which you can enter the demon's realm. Now keep your part of the deal, human. Return my energy to me. No. Wait, what? You bastard. I'll kill you. 
No, no, spare me, please. I'll do anything. I grant your desires. Please, just let me go. The captain watched as the demon withered away, the energy draining Neutronium doing an excellent job. He wasn't in the business of granting mercy, especially to the supernatural. He headed back to the captain's deck, having already relayed the coordinates to the navigation and HQ. He could foresee a little rest or relaxation ahead, but that's what it meant to be a member of the CSS Navy. He had work to do. End of story. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope 